There was moments where I was close to just quitting basketball. To go from throwing in the towel, like just, this isn't it. There's no way I'm gonna make it. To crying nights. Now I'm at a point where I understand who I am a little bit better, I understand the life I have, but when you look back on it, in the moments I do, it's, it's still crazy, you know, to, to even be here. When he was born, of course, that's very special to any mother. We had this Fisher Price who it was like red on the bottom and then blue and then like a white rim or something. And he would go in and, you know, take the ball and all I would hear was like thump, thump. That was the rim coming down, not realizing that was just another intro to where he was destined to be. The first thing I remember is like a little ledge that's like right there in like an archway and every time I ran by it I just tried to just I would just slap it and just have two hands one hand act as if I was dunking mama cleaned the house we were all short so none of us could clean the archway so all you saw was like these black marks on the wall the next thought would be my mom telling me I'm going to private school and having to leave all my friends for the first time and you know going to a school where you're the one of the few uh, black kids um, I never experienced that before, never been in that setting. Changed me and changed my life. And I didn't have a lot of money. You know, I went to private school. I was I was being fortunate, you know, to go to those schools and but you know it's it's hard being one of the only kids who doesn't have money. If I rip my pants, we're not be able to afford another one. Or unless we sacrifice a meal or sacrifice something. What struck me was by the time he was in seventh and eighth grade, he was by far our best basketball player. And kids go in two directions at that point. They can say, I'm gonna shoot 40 times a game in my eighth grade basketball game. Or they're team players who pass the ball to their friends who know that they might be able to take the shot, but they're not going to because they want to include their friends. That was Donovan. Practice Wack Park in Harlem it was myself, my teammate Eric, my teammate Brandon, we all dunked for the first time on the same day in lap lines. Crazy, uh, I don't know how that happens, but that was our first time ever doing it. Um, I was the shortest one, so it was most impressive when I did. I remember back in the days when the squad... All I cared about, like I said, was just playing basketball. So I'm in boarding school my 10th grade year. My mom, you know, she always sees things ahead of time. So she told me that, you know, I was acting out of character, not, being the same humble kid, just kind of getting out of my element. And she had warned me that God's gonna make you recognize that you have to, you know, be the same kid you've always been. Didn't listen. A week later, I break my wrist in a baseball game. I miss out on a whole summer of AAU, and this is when rankings are huge. Every time I Google my name, it'd be like, oh, this kid is good, but we're not sure if he's good enough. He can't shoot. All he does is dunk. He's athletic. That's it. Fortunately for me, it fueled me, you know, all the negative stuff. So now it's like this, this fire, like it's just starting to build and build and build. Number 21, Donald Mitchell has announced he is attending Louisville University. I got him a text and it was like, we'd love to offer you uh, a scholarship to play at the University of Louisville. This was right before I'm about to play a game. And I was basically like, this is so crazy. I was thinking just about college. Uh, how do I get my degree in three, four years, and hopefully after that, make it to the NBA. I shoot sometimes on weekends at 1 a.m. Um, you know, when there's college parties, and you understand that your other players and your teammates are out, so you go shoot. I caught myself one night. I was walking back from the gym, and the song 30 for 30 came on. And I texted my mom and dad, and I was like, yeah, I will never have to work again. I wasn't talking about the NBA. I just knew I was going to just make it somehow, in some way. I didn't know how. Because there was moments where I was close to just quitting basketball. 
That jump from high school to college, I think is huge. And there were moments where I was like, this isn't it. We had played Virginia the game before um, I got, we got killed. Um, I was benched for the game against Indiana in the Pacers arena. All the scouts gonna be there. Like I knew he like deserved to start and I knew like he was better than what his last game because I do watch all of his games and I did know that he needed a little booster. I was like, maybe I can help him. Jordan is not a, uh, I'm gonna say, she doesn't get really in depth with her emotions when it comes to my stuff. She's like, oh, you got it. That morning, my sister texted me. It was more like, I believe you can do this. I've always seen you work. Like she was bringing up moments from the past. And that's when I was like, okay, like if she's saying this, then it must be real. I knew it was motivational actually. It was a pretty good text message. Just got to the game and I had a career high that game. Splitting that right, hitting crazy shots, falling out of bounds. Mitchell all the way. And that game really changed everything. I mean, I was doubting myself. And my mom saying the same thing. Jordan saying the same thing. But I didn't believe it until like, right before the draft. <laughs> With the 13th pick in the 2017 NBA draft, Donovan Mitchell. Last night, <laughs> this was just, it was all brand new to me. It's just one of those things where he doesn't feel like you're there. Then when you hear your name called, I was also happy. An organization that I love, you know, I really fell in love with the, the city as a whole. I went and walked around when I first got there and somewhere that they treated you like nice and with respect and you know, it was, it was a really special place. Felt like he really fit what we call jazz DNA. He, he fit the personality of our organization very well. It was the very first game where one of his teammates, I guess he got sick to his stomach or something, I'm not sure what happened, but Don had to start. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is the first game of the season and Don's on the court. I cried. <laughs> I'm starting. So I'm warming up. I'm looking just to get the visuals so I can be like, all right, like when the game comes, I'm not as nervous. It all hit you at one time, and that's when it was like, oh, snap. So like, this is now, it's all uncharted territory. Now I'm just out there just playing basketball. No one knows me. They don't know me as a shooter, so now they're going under screens, and the confidence just soared. Oh big time players make big time shots in big time moments. Unbelievable. I used to hear it on the TV as he's watching it or he's going to a friend's house because they're having an all-star party or whatever it may be. Um, but for him to actually be in the dunk contest and win, it was a great moment for him. Slam dunk champion, Donovan Mitchell from the Utah Jazz. And I'm like, this is full circle for him. It's bigger than just having basketball shoes, it's what uh, I represent what Spider-Man is, like, like my nickname, what I stand for, what that logo and what the shoe itself represents. It's determination over negativity. You never know, especially with kids, you never know what kids go through. Whether it's at home, at school, with work, with their friends, you never know. I want to be able to make sure people understand that I know that this isn't just about basketball, it's about just life too. He saw someone pulling out their change to um, pay for something in the grocery store, but he was shy a few dollars, and Don just said, you know, don't worry about it, it's on me, left the money on the counter and walked out. Moments like that. Um, we had very humble beginnings, and for him to remember what it's like to pull out, you know, you don't have it all. That makes me happy. I finally realized the impact I had. Now I'm at a point where I understand who I am a little bit better. I understand the life I have. But you know, it, when you look back on it, in the moments I do, it's it's still crazy. You know, to to even be here. There's going to be trials and tribulations. And, you know, it may happen next year. But I think going through what I went through this year, I think it really helps me 
It really helped shape me in certain, in many different ways. There are times where I thought, man, maybe this is just a one-year thing, and I'm like a, a one-hit wonder, and that's it. For me, it was just continuing to find ways to, to show, show yourself what you can do.